was growing to about 13 years, very tall. And then the farmer looked at me and said, uh, he's ready to come and work in the farm, this one. And then, of course, my brothers rioted and told him, no, he's not coming. And then they said to him, they said to the, he said to them, no, he must come, he's big enough. He says, no, he's at school. And then the farmer said, why does he want to go to school? Does he want to be a white man? And uh, he was just not convinced that there was any reason. Ultimately, they had to hire somebody to work on behalf of the family, as it were. By then, the girls, the, the girls uh, had to stop school as well, they had to do these chores and those other chores. And the problem those days was, uh, you know, if there was anyone who had to go to school, it had, it had to be the boy. And the girl didn't need to go to school because very soon she's going to get married, somebody must look after her. And so um, this is the history from which we have come. Uh, priority on education, the girls were on the last spot in the queue. And so when we talk today, when we talk today about the need to focus on girls' education, <clears throat> we're not talking just because we think it's fashion, but we're correcting something that went wrong over many generations. We're not supposed to be a top priority at school. Those who made it was good, but for most of the communities, when there's pressure, the girl has to go out and look after the kids and so on, and then do some other work, and then she was not priority. Of course, she would get lobola, and then uh, that's the worth, the net worth that she is in the family. And when she gets to work, when she gets married, she's also expected to sit in the house, look after the family, go fetch wood, collect those bundles of wood, and get water from the stream and so on. And this is what used to happen in most of the villages. And uh, some people thought, in fact, that's a culture. When, in fact, it was the epitome of gender oppression. And today, we have to say that the issue of uh, emancipation of women is one of the topmost priority for the country. Because wherever you go, uh, you've got as many males as there are females, quite often more females actually than men. Uh, we are used to be interested in the demographics here. In Gauteng, you've got more men than females, but in the rest of the countries, the other way around. That's because of the migrant factor. But the point which we want to make to you is that you are very special. It's important for you to start with that because as a father of two daughters, one of the issues that I've always uh, focused on is to make sure that when the girls grow, they must have a sense of self-confidence. The kind of confidence that says to them, they can literally do everything that their brains are talented to do. And that, I think, is where you must all start. That you must have confidence that you are capable of just about handling anything that any other person can handle. You apply your mind to it. It's a very important starting point that you need to believe in yourselves. Believe in yourselves and understand that you are the master of your own destiny and your own future. What happens to you is going to be something that you have decided will happen to you. In other words, you have the right to sit down and think and dream. Those many days ago, you didn't have to dream. Life was clear. There were all sorts of restrictions. Apartheid was one major restriction, particularly for the black kids. 
You couldn't do this, you couldn't do that, you couldn't get into this profession or that profession. I always think about, uh, even when you try and go to school, you found that uh, the environment was very negative sometimes. Now, there's a lady that I, I, I was at school with, and uh, she was doing science, uh, Bachelor of Science, and in the process, uh, she gets called by this professor, uh, Professor Lamprach, he calls it, so, um, uh, he used to stammer a little bit, this guy, said, um, uh, Ms. Mkiza, uh, you must drop chemistry. She was doing chemistry second year in the University of Zululin. And then said, Prof, why? Said, you, you're wasting chemicals. <laughs> then, and then said, in my whole history, no black woman ever passed chemistry. So you had a lot of um, restrictions which were basically based on prejudice. Now we are saying that you have now got a new democratic South Africa which has got a constitution and rights that guarantee our equality. This was done specifically, not for those who fought, not for those who are old, but for the generations that will be born into that dispensation to understand that you are the future of the country. So when we see it as a country and you look at what needs to be done to develop the country, the first investment goes to your future. So when you go to school, you need to understand that you are a project. Society is making an investment in you so that in future that investment must deliver the goods for the people and the country. And therefore, out of what you would have become, the country will be a better place because of you. And so when you sit, wherever you sit, you must know that you could be many here, you could be many where, everywhere else, but each one of you is, is unique. You've got a particular role that you will play that is specific to the talents that you've got. And therefore, make yourself ready for that contribution.